This is Dirty Tricks and Bad Habits in Fusion 360, Episode 2. Today we're going to be making a fillet, sort of. Unfortunately, the fillet tool doesn't always magically work. As an example, if we want to fillet this thing with an even cord width, it just doesn't want to do it. So we have to construct this manually and end up with something like this, where the blend is made with surface geometry. This video gets kind of boring, so I'm putting a little monster in the corner. Before we get into this model, let's look at some of the reasons why fillets don't always work. This is the type of geometry that the fillet tool expects to see. Whether it's on the inside or outside, the fillet tool has no problem. We can make this an even cord width, change this to curvature continuity so we don't get a break in the highlights, and that's all good. Now let's look at a couple that won't be so nice. For this one, the surfaces that join at this edge come to a continuous linear profile. This will fill it, but we want a cord width fillet here, which won't work because you can't fill it continuous surfaces. We'll come back to this one. Here's another example that's pretty much the same as the last one. It's just that the break terminates within the geometry. Same problem. And here's another situation that might happen, which is essentially asking the fillet to go from convex to concave. In fact, this edge is broken into two at the inflection point. So this won't work either. So let's tackle this first one. The basic idea here is that we'll trim out the area where we want the fillet to be, then construct the blend with either the loft or patch tool. There are many ways to trim this inner section. But the fastest way I've found for most cases is by using the pipe tool. This allows us to maintain a constant distance from the original edge, no matter how the geometry changes. So you create a pipe in the model workspace using this edge, then to make sure this goes through the entire surface, we'll extend these faces with press pull. Now back in our patch tools, we can use the outside of this pipe to trim the inside section of our surface. Then we can loft from one side to the other, define the continuity as curvature, and that's pretty much it. If you need more control over the profile of this blend, we can do that too, by creating splines from these endpoints in a 3D sketch. One important thing to note here is that the continuity of these splines to the surface geometry need to match the continuity we'll be defining in the loft tool. For example, if you want to make a curvature continuous loft, but the spline is only defined as tangent, that's likely to cause an error. So let's say we need to have control somewhere in the middle of the profile, not just the ends. We can do that by projecting a split line, then doing the same thing with the 3D spline. If we look at the other two, they're essentially the same thing. But we can look at this one a little closer because there's something else we can do here. Because this edge terminates within the surface geometry, maybe we want our blend to stop there too. We can create a pipe as we did before, but only to where it meets the continuous surface. Extend this out by roughly the radius of the pipe, then round the end of this pipe with a fillet. Here's a quick tip for defining this precisely, while keeping the diameter of the pipe as the driver for everything. If we edit the pipe feature in the timeline and hover over the section size, it'll show a variable name for that parameter. Then we can use that parameter to help define the press pull and fillet features. For the press pull, we can use our variable divided by two. Then I'd add another millimeter just to make sure the resulting edges are past this line after the fillet operation. Then we can do a similar thing for the rounded end. Just use our variable divided by two. Now this will always be a full round fillet. So if we go back and change this diameter, everything will update along with it. A couple things to note here is that the variable names only show up after the feature has been created. And you can also do this via the parameters dialog box, which will allow you to change the name of the variable and other fun stuff. But it takes a few more steps. So we have this rounded off pipe, and we use it to trim the surface. We're going to use the patch tool for this one, so we need to close off this end with a 3D spline, just like we did before with the guide curves. Then we create a patch with a curvature continuity, knit it together, that's pretty much it. So that's the technique. Now let's try a practical-ish example. This is a solid body, but we need to do this with surfaces. You could create split lines and simply delete faces to turn this into surface geometry, but I like to keep the main body intact as much as possible. So let's create a copy of this surface with the offset tool. This will allow us to modify the geometry if necessary and not mess up the original. So we have this surface. We can use an overbuild approach here, so we start by extending the surface we just copied. This will make it easy to join back with the main body. Let's make a pipe, trim the inside. Now this is the gap we need to blend. If we try to loft the entire thing, you'll notice some surface imperfections. That's because we're asking a bit too much from the loft tool to expect a smooth blend, mostly because of this tight corner. So what we can do is build this in sections. If we create split lines where we make three separate features, it should fare a bit better. Once we have our split lines, we can loft the two straight sections, and now we can fill in the corner either by using the patch tool or the loft tool with guide rail continuity. In this case, I did a loft. So let's join this back to the main body. The easiest way to do this is with the replace face command. But let's do this the hard way just in case. 
We can use the same pipe as before to create split lines on our solid body. Delete the faces we don't need. Now we can use the boundary fill tool to turn this back into a solid body. But let's do that the hard way too. We can use the trim tool to trim away the excess from our surface bodies. Then stitch everything back together into a solid. And that's it.